Mary O'Sullivan, who comes on the show often. She's the owner of Encore Executive and Professional Coaching. And we're talking about a lot about coaching and how it can help you reduce stress, save you time and money, and definitely, um, definitely just help you in general, help you be happier and healthier as well, because we know what stress can do. And this program, or this half hour, is brought to you by Mary O'Sullivan and Encore Executive Coaching. We're taking your calls at 438-WPRO, 438-9776. Welcome, Mary. Patricia, it's great to be here yeah, with you again. Yeah, it's fun. I'm glad you're in the studio. Yes, thank you. All right. It's great so to be here. So when people hire an executive coach, mm-hmm. what are some of the most common issues that they struggle with? Now, I know Brian just talked about anxiety and panic. Yes. And I'm sure you have some of that, too. Well, we do get that. But if I have someone with that level of anxiety, I usually refer them back to their medical doctor to okay. start with because, you know, I am not a medical professional. And I want to make that clear to people that... I'm not a psychologist. I don't have any medical attachments whatsoever. It's strictly the coach training that I received at the university that I implement uh, with my clients. So, um, yes, I will refer people when they're stressed like that. But the important thing is to know that, um, and he brought up some good points, is that, you know, people are not compartmentalized. You can't compartmentalize your life. So if you have stress at work, it's going to impact your relationships, your home life, um, all the other uh, relationships or the impact. It'll affect the impact of, you know, who you're with or how you behave in public. And what about the stressful reactions you have in your body that then throw you off? So, for example, when I've been stressed, I'll get indigestion. Yeah. And then, you know, I'll go to a doctor and they'll say, it's stress. Right, right. And, and it's funny, when I'm not stressed, I don't have that. Right. And and I find that as well with a lot of my clients is that people, uh, their physical and their mental are connected. Mm. And there's more and more science and research behind that right now. In fact, uh, Harvard Medical School has done a number of studies. They've been studying... Uh, relaxation response for over 30 years. It started kind of with Lamaze movement. If you remember Lamaze childbirth, right? That's the relaxation response. Well, now Harvard is incorporating that with uh, Mass General Hospital, Mm -hmm. and they are using it as a third prong of their actual approach to healing. Mm -hmm. So relaxation, meditation, some kind of uh, letting go with the mind, uh, because just like your other guest said, those hormones start to churn in the body, and they send out this flight or flight, a fight or flight um, response, and people then get into this panic stage. And isn't there also research for neuroscience? You know, that's now looking at neuroplasticity of the brain. That yes, we can change if we change the way we think. Right. We change the way we behave you and whole can, body chemistry changes. Yes, you can actually change the brain. And more importantly, they've learned now that you can actually change your, your gene structure. So I really like to talk to clients about really getting into that relaxation response. Mm-hmm. Lots of times people are very wound up about work or relationship or failure on the job or something to that effect. And it just snowballs. It gets worse and worse. And people become tongue-tied, they become paralyzed, really. They don't know how, what to do next or how to behave. So rather than give them a suggestion about, well, go do this or that and you'll feel better, I try to back into their inner selves. I sort of probe a bit and ask, what are they feeling and what can they do to sit and clear their minds. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, that kind of thing never occurs to them. It never occurs to them to just sit and maybe sit by the ocean, sit in a garden, sit at Grace Episcopal Church in Providence is a beautiful church to just sit and admire the stained glass. And the reason you're saying that is because if you do that and you clear your mind, then you can think better and problem solve better when you, you can, come back. You can think and problem solve and be more creative. I know that's happened to me. I had a, a problem I was trying to figure out. It was a real simple problem compared to most people's. I was trying to figure out what type of graphic I should put on a note card I wanted to send out to people, and I was struggling with that. And I was in a yoga class, and we were doing the meditation part and the relaxation part, and it just came to me. It just came to my head what the graphics should be. So it's true. If you can clear all that 
sort of craziness out of your head and sit with yourself. And as Brian said, love yourself, appreciate yourself. It becomes much easier to think about what your next step should be. Hmm. What do you do when clients come to you and they're dealing with a toxic work environment, which you probably see a lot? Yes, and that's a huge problem now. And uh, as we were discussing earlier, what's happening now in companies is that when somebody leaves for either they retire or take a sabbatical or just get another job or quit, those people are not being replaced right now. Very few industries are ramping up. Industries are ramping down. And so there's more work and fewer people to do the work. And so people are extremely stressed with this. So there are a couple of things that people can do, and this is actual practical advice that I do give people. One of the things is you just have to do your job. You have to show up every day and not get caught up in the politics. Let things happen as they may. You basically have no impact on what's happening around you. You can only control yourself. So I urge people to just sort of avoid the gossip do their job, and and be as good at they, as they can possibly be at the job that they're doing. So the people who would come to you for coaching, mm-hmm. would they be people who are dissatisfied at work? Or could it be a relationship issue, a loss issue, a health issue? I know you do executive coaching. Yes. I focus mostly on people that have issues in the workplace, leadership issues. They have a group of people that they're they're failing to lead properly, or uh, people that just want to get ahead, they want to move forward in their uh, their work and haven't been able to overcome obstacles. So I try to help people see what those obstacle, obstacles are and then move ahead. And your background is that you were working with a big company yes. for many years. I work for three very large corporate entities for over 30 years in the aerospace and defense Mm -hmm. business. And And then you went on to get your coaching training and certificate. Right. And that's something that I I, uh, encourage my clients to do as well. And that's one of the things in a toxic workplace is that you need to take full advantage of everything the company is offering you. So the company offered me an opportunity to get a master's degree, which I took, And then they offered me, as part of my leaving the company, they offered me a tuition credit, which I took full advantage of. So don't get mad at your workplace. Turn it around. Try to find out what you can get before you storm out the door. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make that mistake. You're entitled to things. You work for your vacation. Take your vacation days. You work for, you're entitled to the tuition credits. You're entitled to vacation. You're entitled to these things. And lo- and those are the opportunities that will help to keep you positive, even though it may be a tough position. Well, that's exactly right, because that's the positive thinking aspect of it. Yeah. People get hung up in these very negative thoughts, and they can't think themselves out of it. And they come to me, and they're very, very, very wound up. So the first thing we try to do is to focus on unwinding that all that busy stuff that's going on in the head, and then try to take some positive steps that are going to lead them to a better place. Okay. And you offer complimentary coaching sessions. Absolutely. Everybody who's a Patricia Raskin listener Mm -hmm. is entitled to a 20-minute complimentary consultation. You just call me directly. You won't get a machine. You won't have a gatekeeper. You'll call me directly. It's 401 742 one nine six five and my website is www.encoreexecutivecoaching.com. Right. And if they get your answering machine, meaning your voice your voicemail, yes, you'll call them. It's back. my personal voicemail and I'll call you back immediately. Four zero one seven four two nineteen sixty five. It's a wonderful offer for listeners. So folks if, right. you know as Mary has said on another program, which by the way shocked me, there are statistics that say that seventy percent of people in the workforce today in our country are unhappy. They're unhappy. Wow. According to Gallup, they hate their jobs. Okay. So, I mean, so if that's true, then we have quite a few people listening that may be in that position. And if that's true, you want to be happier. You may not be able to leave your position, 
But what Mary can do in talking with you is give you some strategy to make it palatable for yourself, to see the opportunity there while you can start looking for something else. That's exactly right. Because you want to go off. If you're going to leave, you want to leave on the right foot. I encourage people to not burn their bridges. And by the way, there's statistics that say that 60% of workers report that their health is fair to poor due to job stress. Wow. Mm. Well, really, folks, uh, give Mary a call. We're here to try to help people be healthier and happier and more joyful in their life. That's what this program's all about. And those are the kinds of people that I bring on the air. 438-WPRO, 438-9776, So really, do give us a call. Uh, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, we can take your calls up until uh, the 5 o'clock hour. So give Mary a call. You can also call her on her number, and you'll have more time with her off air. But you certainly would love to have your questions here on air. But her number is 401 742 one nine six five. And again, my guest is Mary O'Sullivan, and she is the president CEO of Encore Executive and Professional Coaching. Log on to EncoreExecutiveCoaching.com. Call her for your free twenty-minute consultation. And this program, this half hour, is brought to you by Mary O'Sullivan and Encore Executive Coaching. I'm Patricia Raskin, and we're on News Talk six thirty and ninety nine seven FM WPRO. We are the voice of Southern New England, and we'll be right back. Show and I'm Patricia Raskin. We're here on News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM WPRO. We are the voice of Southern New England. And my guest for this half hour is Mary O'Sullivan, owner of Encore Executive and Professional Coaching. And we're talking about how, uh, as you said, 70% of the folks in the workplace really don't like their job or hate their job. Right. And what you do is you really help them get through it, come up with strategies and planning, and she offers complimentary coaching for the first session at 20 minutes. Right. Just call. And that number is 401-742-1965. And uh, definitely go on to EncoreExecutiveCoaching.com. You have blogs, all kinds of things that will really help people. We're here to help you folks. You can call us now with any question or comment, 438-WPRO, 438-9776, toll free, 800-321-9776. right, so Mary, give us an example. And I know we're going to change genders and names, Mm -hmm. you know, because of confidentiality. Right. Give us an example that you think would be really great for our listeners of somebody who came in, had an issue, you worked with them three, four, five, six, seven times, whatever it was, and they really saw the results. Yeah, I was very impressed. I have a client right now, a professional um, engineer, and this person had witnessed a tragic accident on their job where two people were killed. Oh. And my question to her was, well, was grief counseling offered by your company? And she offered that, yes, it was, but she did not bother to take advantage of it, which I thought was pretty surprising. So needless to say, she was kind of wound up and wanted to move out of that position. So after a few sessions, I realized that she was in no condition to be moving into some other job because she still needed to work on so Mm. many issues of stress relief herself. One of the things I asked her is if if she ever just sat and read a magazine and had a cup of tea. And she said, well, I read a magazine while I'm cooking dinner. And I thought, I don't know how that could possibly be (laughs) relaxing. (laughs) But she was really never giving her ta- herself any time at all. So we began to work on different strategies to help her relieve stress. She can't always get to yoga, but she can get to a walk. She lives near the water. So on her way back from dropping her son off from school, she can walk down to the beach for 20 minutes. That's not exactly meditation in the strict meditative sense, but it's a way to release a lot of stress. The ocean's very relaxing, as we all know. It's just fun to get out, walk a little bit on the sand, listen to the water, and come back. It's refreshing. And the funny thing was, when she got back, her husband didn't even know that she was gone. So he didn't even notice, and here she was so worried about... Mm taking time for herself. So she's learning to do more things like that. And how is that help? Is that helping her um, be able to focus more on the job? 
Well, I noticed right away that it's, first of all, her demeanor is completely different when she comes in now. She's not kind of with a pinched face, and her body language is much more open, Mm -hmm. not clenched. Mm -hmm. And she is able to see her job with better perspective. Mm -hmm. The other issue, she could never say no. So people would go off on vacation, and she would take on extra work, and she was working really crazy hours, and that just added to the stress. Mm -hmm. So again, it's kind of back to what I said in the beginning, is that the hardest thing for people to do is to kind of unwind themselves so that they can see what they're doing on the job Mm -hmm. more clearly and then have that courage, gain that inner strength to say, you know what, I this is too much. I just can't take this on right now, particularly if it's out of their scope of work. All right, folks, 438-WPRO, 438-9776, toll-free, 800-321-9776. We have about nine minutes left, and we're, check, we're taking your questions. If anything's come up at work and it's stopping you in some way, you just feel unhappy, give us a call. Mary will certainly give you some wisdom. And, again, you can call her for your 20-minute complimentary consultation at 401-742-1965. What about folks, Mary, who are really ready for the next step? But they're scared, right? Yeah. Because it's change and transition, right? You no, know, and they may have, they may have some retirement say they and they and they they're afraid to make the move because they're comfortable, but they're just not happy. But right. they're thinking they may want to do something else. Yes, that's an issue of clarifying what they really want to do. So I try to get them to tell me what it is they want, and then we start to take small steps to reach those goals. So, for instance, if there's somebody who's ready to leave a position, again, going back to what I said earlier, I don't like people to quit their jobs. I don't like anybody to just walk off. I want that person to walk off completely prepared. Mm -hmm. So if they hear things are going on like a layoff might be coming. If they hear those rumors, go to somebody in charge, whether it be HR or your boss or a director or somebody who might have an inside scoop and say, hey, I hear there's rumors of layoffs. I'd like to volunteer for one because there's a lot more benefits with being laid off than just walking out the door. So it's not a bad idea to do that. For somebody who wants to retire, Oftentimes, they're not sure what their next step is going to be. They know they just don't want to be where they are anymore. I also recommend the voluntary layoff for that because you're going, you're going to get your severance. Depending on the company, if you've been there for more than 25 years, you're going to get a week for every year up to a certain amount of weeks. And then, so that's full pay of severance, right? Mm-hmm. It could be 26 weeks. Mm-hmm. So take your severance, then you can take unemployment, then you can start to collect your pension and your Social Security. That will give you enough time and enough money to then look around and experiment with things that you might want to do. Maybe you just want to work at Home Depot because you like working with your hands. I I think what you're trying to say to listeners is that we get so self-involved and so panicked Mm -hmm. over things, and we need to look at... Where's the opportunity? What are we gaining from where we are? Exactly. And how can that help us to strategize and move on? Exactly. You've said it very well, Patricia. That's exactly right. You do not ever want to make a rash step. I do not recommend just getting angry and quit. I have had clients that have done that, and it's been to their detriment because they've gone through every penny of their savings You don't want that to happen. These people are really desperate. They're down and out. They have no money. They have no source of income. They have to take any job that comes along and any job that's offered to them. And I do recommend that. You have to pay your bills. So if it's working at the post office, working at Home Depot, working at Benny's to cover you for a few months until you get on your feet, that's something you have to do if you've quit. So you, there's a price to be paid for just walking away. And I really don't recommend people do that. What's the most asked question that you get from clients? So is it all very individual or is there one kind of basic thing that comes back? 
most clients want to be told what to do. The most asked question is, what should I do? I don't know what to do about this situation. And in coaching, we don't give people the answers. We give them the tools to find the answer themselves. So I ask people back another question, what is it that you want to do? And people often do not know the answer, Patricia. It's so amazing. So how do you help them find that? Mary? So we ask, what is it that you really want to do? And sometimes I just give them time to sit and think about that, you know. And I tell them, it doesn't matter what you tell me. It doesn't have to be a brilliant answer. Any answer will do. But if you could be king or queen for a day, what would you do? And that's when we can start to chip away at helping them reach their goals. I have a client who is working in sales right now. He's really unhappy. It's taken over a year for him to figure out finally what it is he wants to do. I've been coaching him since last March. He's come up with a number of ideas that really didn't pan out. I asked him to try some of these. I always ask people, put your toe in the water and try this. Uh, they haven't worked out for him, so it's a good thing he didn't quit his job. So now he believes the company's going to shut down. So he asked me, what should I do? Should I hang in there or should I just walk out? I said, if there's any chance that you can get a benefit from a plant closing, then stay. And so he's starting to formulate that plan in his mind right now with what his next steps are going to be. He's going to open up a small business. He's done Great. some experimenting with asking around, asking about leases, working with the Chamber of Commerce, et cetera. All right. So, folks, if you're listening to this and you may not be the person who's in question here, but you know someone, and we all know someone. It could be a daughter. It could be a son, a son-in-law. It could be a relative. It could be a friend. You know, that's in the workforce and they're unhappy and you feel that, you know, this would really help them have the, write this number down and call them up and say, I've heard something on the radio on the Patricia Raskin show. Mary O'Sullivan can really help you again. Complimentary for 20 minutes. Complimentary session. 401-742-1965. 742-1965. And again, the website is EncoreExecutiveCoaching.com. Take a look at it because we don't have to keep struggling and suffering. There's help for all of us, and that's very much why I do the program. Closing thoughts, Mary. What do you well, want to leave our listeners with? I just want to let everybody know that I do have a number of different packages available. So don't feel like, uh, you know, you can't afford it when you come in. Um, I can work with you. Executive coaching is not the cheapest thing, but I think because of the individual one-on-one -on -one intense involvement with me, I think people, I have testimonials on my website to that uh, extent, I think people will find that they can really grow and really have a great experience with me. Yeah, very much so. I can help. All right. Very excited about that. Again, the number is 742 1965. Right. And the website is www.EncoreExecutiveCoaching.com. Thank you. And this segment's been brought to you by Encore Executive Coaching.